Welcome everybody to this Midas presentation that will introduce uh, our new program called Midas NGen. This is the next generation solution for building and analysis design. Today we'll give you a brief introduction of what the program can do as well as a, uh, a demonstration of a simple structure using the program itself. A little bit of Midas itself. Uh, Midas has been developing softwares for so, quite some time now. We have a line of different programs, some of them being along what would be considered CAT-based, which allows for various features and various uses of mainly drawing sections and, and plans of structures. Uh, one of the well-known ones might be DShop, but part of where what's being uh, a nice feature in this, this, new, this new software is that it also complements or communicates what is with Midas Drawing, which is a, a program that we'll see actually in, in a little more use, but it's almost like architectural drawings based software. Midas actually mainly focuses on uh, what would be finite element software, computer aided engineering software, uh, like Midas Gen and Midas Civil, which are structural engineering softwares. So Midas Gen itself would be considered uh, a complement or a similar concept of a software as the one we're going to see today. It, it's used for structural engineering. It has some features that make it different as well as some limitations that make it different. And so we'll be focusing on those differences along the way as well. Midas also has other software for geotechnical engineering like Midas GTS and X as well as some what would be mechanical engineering like Midas NFX. And lastly, Midas also develops software for design, like Design Plus used for designing specific sections, specific members of a structure in detail, as well as providing detailed drawing, as well as SolWorks, that's a software that's also used for designing practical solutions to geotechnical programs. But basically what we're going to see today is how Midas has brought all these these different lines, these different concepts into a single program, a single platform that's actually going to focus on structural engineering. And so this is where Midas NGen, the next generation, comes in. It can do basically all these concepts. And so what's interesting about the software is that what's being called an all-in-one design system, it can actually go from drawings to drawings in the sense that it can take architectural drawings, import them by layers, even assign them to different floors, and allow you to directly model in the program, analyze, design, be it different members, sections, beams, steel, be steel beams or RC slabs itself. It can automatically generate generic reports that include even quantity and in the end it can actually even do what would be the structural drawings be it of the whole building or specific sections so it really does allow for what would be a complete integration of a daily a daily job of a structural engineer and would allow to as we'll see due to some of the automation features save a lot of time and the optimization features it will give you the based through the design of the structure itself and the reporting, it will give you what would be the best solution for the specific problem using the least material, but also meeting the requirements of, of strength and serviceability. And lastly, you know, high tech being that it can actually up be used with some of these very advanced features that will put all this together. So one, right off the bat, I just, like to cover a little bit of the differences in what would be considered some of these other um, maybe finite element softwares that are actually node element based versus what we're going to be seeing in NGen which is considered at object based. So programs like Gen, the, the other structural engineering program that we manage, usually the way you work is you, you work by creating nodes and you then connect these nodes to make the elements and then the elements we assign them sections to finally create what would be the the model with these properties and then you run the analysis so you're strictly already right off the bat starting off uh, based on these node element connections whereas 
the engine, of what, you know, integrating what is now the the CAD approach, you actually work mostly, or I would say everything done with the modeling itself is based on the geometry. So you you can draw sections and then extrude them almost like you're working on AutoCAD using these CAD-based commands, create your whole structure, and then in the very end, you just specify the size of a mesh and the program will automatically mesh this as it's running the analysis or right before it runs the analysis and assigns what would be the structural properties. So this would be kind of just establishing the main difference between these two approaches. And we'll see some of the benefits that come from using the object-based interface. So what itself are the features or what, you know, what can Midas Gen Engine do in itself? Well, it's a total solution pro program and it allows you to save time not just because it can do it all on the same platform but at every step on the way so the modeling itself for instance can be very easily done it's cat based modeling so we even have this feature called cat tracing in which in the drawing program you or directly importing it from AutoCAD you can specify by layers what a wall will be or where the columns will be and the program will once imported into the engine will allow you to automatically create those geometries based on what the information is in the CAD the CAD drawing itself other features that save time for instance let's say you have you finally have the structure in place loading can also be done in automatic generation either being like the wind or the seismic static loads one only has to specify the the code that it wants to work on dimensions general dimensions of this of the section in the program or of the structure and the program can calculate generate these loads automatically and give you the profiles to verify as well as applying slab loads so it's all very easy and we'll be looking directly at some of this process when we're doing the demonstration and so then saving time also what would be in the analysis section the program allows you to auto generate the mesh you only have to specify a size of the element a global size of the element and you can actually refine this in the process and the program will then take the geometry mesh it on it right before the analysis and go ahead and give you the the results for even combined structures and then an important feature of this tool of course is the optimum design feature so you can specify design codes that you want to use in the program either for steel find you the optimum section or for what would be reinforced concrete give you the optimal rebar distribution and even within the criteria that you choose be it for strength serviceability give you the optimal design that meets all of them and then lastly what would be the output so the program has very nice features that allow you to automatically generate not only drawings but also reports based on Microsoft Word and you can even include things like the quantity or the material you can specify the program uh, assign values to some of these material quantities and you can even calculate like almost how much it, the structure is in, in the general budget so the program itself we saw the sequence of what it can do but what kind of projects it can do are also very versatile it can do regular and irregular structures the program can do reinforced concrete buildings you can model walls slab any kind of member that's concrete or reinforced concrete as well as what would be steel buildings and even if they are they have combined sections of what would be reinforced and steel it's it's also very handy for what would be plant structures and we'll see some of these features based on the what is the grid system that it can use it's very handy to generate these irregular steel geometries or combined sections and lastly the regular geometries themselves any any kind of underground structure any kind of what would be water tank any kind of geometry you can draw or directly import the program can then go ahead and just mesh and and run the analysis on and so it's very handy in all of it that it can do. 
the analysis types themselves, they can do what would be the, you know, classic linear and static analysis, but it can also do other kinds of advanced analysis like the modal, uh, the P delta, even linear buckling or construction stage analysis and considering cranes, crane loads or crane analysis, as well as other new features like a direct analysis. The program also allows what would be a parametric analysis in which you can specify a varying specific conditions and the program will run all series of analysis in a single run. Regarding the design itself, the program has the following codes implemented, the following international codes, be it for steel or reinforced concrete design. And these codes are constantly getting updated. So as you can see, being that Midas is an international company, we have design codes from all over the world. And this is just some of the ones they have, some of the main ones that are relevant, but there are others. So apart from the codes themselves, the program also has a large database for what would be like steel sections, even by, by code or by region. And you can even do what would be combined sections, as you can see in the middle of the screen. It's relatively good and easy for the program. As we will see in the demo, uh, you can select from a long list then get the drawing itself and then you can modify it once you've selected it from the list which is also good for what would be the RC sections. You can select general shapes and then once you have them in the, in the platform before you assign them or approve them you can modify them, you can integrate them and so the program is very versatile and it really allows you to work almost with irregular sections with virtually no limit. But apart from that, the program itself, as I mentioned, is CAD-based commands. And so you can easily generate any kind of regular geometry using commands we're used to, like drawing, extruding, Boolean operations for combining. And then in the very end, all you have to do is specify the program a general mesh size and run the analysis. And then you can go back and refine this mesh very easily. The finer the mesh, the more accurate the analysis itself. But it allows for the engineer to work almost on any structure. It doesn't even have to be a building itself. But given that feature, you can see how working on difficult structures like curved walls or irregular structures that have roofings or, or curved shells or curved slabs becomes very handy to have this kind of program that's CAD-based and that it really allows you to work on any kind of irregular structure without having to worry too much, you just have to worry about the drawings themselves, which if you don't want to do directly in Midas, you can just go ahead and import and then the program will automatically mesh it for you. So along the automation, so some of the things that it can do itself, the program allows you to automatically, for instance, generate design groups automatically generate what would be the load combinations and then this is quite handy for once you're doing design to do a quick design test generate design what would be reports specific sections here we're looking at when you're creating a section itself how easy it is to change it and rerun the analysis again so all from the work tree you can very easily drag and drop replace sections generate reports detail reports themselves. As we were talking about briefly looking at some of the different sequence of steps, some of the things that are also automated, as I had mentioned, would be the application of wind loads. So for buildings, you can specify different methods, different you can select different kind of structures for how the wind load is going to be applied or considered. Some are, you know, it can be just regular building or it can be an enclosed structure, an open structure. And so this really facilitates the process. So you just have to dis choose the design code and depending on the type of structure you assign, you can either do it by selecting what would be sides of the building or just specifically telling it, you know, this is an open structure and, and it will do it automatically for you. And then it will actually even allow you to look at what the load functions would look like by, by 
floor. Similarly, we would be the seismic load applications. This is also an automatic feature. You just have to choose the seismic code and ask the program to even item, uh, it can approximate the period for you in an automatic feature, calculate it for you. And so by specifying just a few uh, few parameters, the program can apply these complicated seismic loads, even the response spectrums, in a relatively easy and automatic process. And for slab loads themselves, you don't have to specifically select. You could, but there's also the automatic way to apply the slab loads. You can just select by floor or to the whole structure just by type of by type of element and just specify the, what would be like the dead load and the live load themselves when you're applying it. And similarly for what would be if you're doing the substructure, it's very easy to apply the earth pressure loads. And so you can just define the water level, the ground level, and some properties about the soil themselves. And the program will automatically consider what would be these earth pressure loads. And so one of the things that are also very important is the output, how the engineer itself can look at the results. So the program automatic also has the automatic generation of what would be reports in Word. And so you can easily specify what you want to be considered in the in the report, either t by type of result, by type of parameters that you were using, and then arrange the order, select certain kind of graphs or results or images, and then once you generate the program or generate the report itself, the program will follow, I guess, the sequence or the specifications of what you decided to include. So the report can be very customized. But again, once it's generated, it's in Microsoft Word, so you can always go back and edit it. But this is an uh, automated, automated generation of report. So for instance, we're looking here at the structure. I have on my left a column of all the things that I can add to my report, and I can just specify, drag and drop, and then generate. And we see on the right what the report, the report is going to look like. And then I can easily go back and edit this. I can change the sequence, I can change the text size, all within the Midas program. And this will be automatically updated in the report in Word. And so it's very handy to have this kind of feature that allows you to customize, that allows you to even edit type of fonts, type of tables, not just the sequence, but how the information is presented to a very high detail. And so it's almost like if you're working in Microsoft Word itself, but it's all within the program being generated to your customize, customization. So part of also what's interesting about the program is that it can output after you've, you're done with your analysis, your optimal design, you can then also ask the program to give you what would be structural plans and section plans drawings. And so this is a, a feature that's been been a, of high request for, for Midas. And so it's finally been implemented into the program. And it makes it very handy once you have the final structure, then you can finally print out or get your structural drawings, not just of section, but of the whole plant itself. Other automation process that the program offers would be uh, member offsets, where you used to be um, have to do it by itself, but now the program can just automatically do it for you. You just select the whole structure and, and click on auto generate, and this will be reflected accurately in the structural drawings. So. The modeling itself within the program, as, in, as we mentioned, it's CAD based. So it's very easy to just select a section and draw or edit, make connections. This is all based on geometry. And so you can intersect, you can draw, divide, drag, and then using commands like Boolean operations, cut. Because it's based on geometry, then it's very easy to edit, very easy to go back, and very easy to basically go ahead and create any kind of structure. Again, it's based on CAD commands. 
but something that's a very nice feature is, as I, ha I had previously mentioned, but I can show a little more detail, is the cat tracing. So you can take these architectural drawings that have been layered by type of section, and just by telling the program, I want to generate the columns, you just drag your mouse over the section or your walls, and the program will automatically read the information in the cat trace for that specific story and generate the geometries that have been specified. And you can do this for multiple layers by by any story. And you can then also draw on top of these layers. So you can use the, the guidelines themselves of the drawing to generate, for instance, where the beam should be. And the program will then automatically allow you to intersect all these sections. And then lastly, you tell it you want to draw some slabs. You can just draw a big rectangle over your whole floor and the program will automatically assign the slabs to the sections themselves. Then you can go back and delete sections that are not needed. And so this part itself makes it very, very handy to work with architects to get the optimal design or to get the their plan in, run the analysis, and then once you're done with that, you can then send back to them the drawing of what the sections should be based on what the structural engineer design criteria is. So other sections and other aspects of selfs that have been optimized would be even things like slabs from different levels, different kind of sections, plate versus membrane structures or beams or versus wall columns. So all this can be, all, all kind of irregular geometries can be, or shapes can be easily modeled. And then once you run the analysis, you can get the design for specific element as well as I had mentioned the specific drawing of the section. So it's great for these kind of structures that are not your conventional everything on the same level box looking structures but when you're really getting into what would be a customized structure, a regular structure. So for instance as I mentioned when you have slabs that are not all on the same floor that can be tricky for other programs in this case, it's very easy because it's just geometry for the program to align, to connect, as well as what would be transfer, transfer floor models. And then what's, uh, I think one of the also really good features, as we mentioned, would be the design itself, the capabilities of the program to design. We can design results based on different criteria, but it can be based on specific target ratios that you can specify. But you can also specify what would be based on other things like serviceability or would be uh, economically efficient itself. So the program, if it's a steel structure or if it's a steel section, it can find what would be the ultimate, ultimate section itself. And if it's more of a concrete, reinforced concrete, then the program can also be used for, or it can design the rebar either for ultimate strength or for serviceability itself. And depending on the code, it can also even give you very clear visuals, very easy to, sp to identify what would be this design check results. So the program will give you this color, color coded sections based on what's, what passes the design code, what's, what's failing design code, what needs to be replaced or checked in itself. So it makes it very easy, very time time saving to identify what areas the engineer needs to focus on, what areas need to be replaced or redesigned. And so as I mentioned for the steel, the program can actually find you the optimal section based on the specific target ratios that you request. And for concrete, it can actually do it uh, for the rebar distribution also automatically. So some of the other features that the program has are the kinds of reports. So not just the full report, but there's specific design reports. And so you can ask for a summary. Well, it will give you cross section of your of the specific, for instance, subbeam we might have selected. You can easily spot if it passes the criteria for the design code, where the rebar distribution or the rebar distribution is. But you can even get an even more detailed report in itself, where you can even include things like the PM curve. 
so here we go through how the detailed report has a lot more information, even the equations that we're used to calculate, whereas the summary just gives you like pass or no pass, okay or no okay, fail or no fail. So here you can kind of see a, a closer look at what the detailed design report includes and what design parameters are being used. Something else that Midas is offering at the moment is our online online um, training. So you can actually go to our page and look at different kinds of uh, videos for these kind of tutorials and it'll go very specifically on all kinds of different structures. So if you go to our page MidasUser.com you can find these online reports. So in short the program has some great capabilities. It's integrated everything from modeling to these advanced reports. It allows you to save a lot of time by its auto generation features in auto design outputs, as well as what would be the analysis and design, which is key. And finally, just how itself you, you can modify or get these advanced reports is also some of the greatest features. And so the benefits being that it's fast for your designs, it's accurate for, and it's also high quality in the sense of the construction. So this allows you to have the maximum productivity for the high, the highest quality output and make it relatively easy to go back, update, change, and revise. So now I'll actually open the program and go through a quick demo demonstration, a quick demonstration uh, on a structure. It will be a structure composed of steel, steel beams, uh, RC columns, and RC slab. So for our demonstration, I'd actually like to start off first introducing Midas Drawing, which is the, uh, the CAD software that we have developed. It's almost like AutoCAD commands I'll uh, draw, create planes, and assign any kind of layering information like you would in, in, in other architectural drawing programs. And so you can have these different series of plants or grids for even different floors and assign specific layering information, that information that can be later, later used by InGen itself to automatically generate sections. So for instance here we have a basement drawing and we can see we have different layers where what would you know from the top view look like some walls and some columns so what we can be done is when the drawing is ready we can specifically assign what would be layer settings for this CAD grid and what that allows you to do then is by um, assigning what would be the layering to specific tags for instance this can be information about how to orient it relative to other other grids as well as what layers are related to the columns or the walls. Then export this as the DWG but with this data information the program is essentially telling NGEN how this how these layers are to be used. So for instance now this being the structural engineering program Midas NGEN I can import this tracing file as we call it, this, which is actually in a DWG format, and I can use it to generate stories, data about different floors. So in, in essence here I'm telling the program I'm going to have a, I don't know, a 20 story building and each story is going to be three, three meters high. And then I can specifically tell the program uh, I want to use this CAD drawing data for a certain number of floors to help me guide and I can keep repeatedly importing these CAD files and now that I have these CAD files imported I can actually select for instance by story and use the data to generate sections so I can then tell the program assuming uh, I've you know predefined some sections themselves by just dragging and drop dropping my cursor 
over the designated area, the program will automatically find, auto detect these layers that are corresponding. So since I select in the section columns, it will look for all the columns in the area. And all I have to do now is, because I've told it already the height of each floor, all I have to do is click apply. And the program has automatically generated these columns for me. And I can continue to do this by different layers, uh, like the walls or slabs, or I can even directly draw connections of beams using these um, these guidelines. So I don't I don't necessarily only have to base it on on what's been pre-assigned, but I can also use these guidelines to draw and connect these beams. And so what that facilitates then is when you're looking at something like these story these high rises or these complex sections, you can see how then by using these different guidelines at different layers geometries, I can very easily now create these structures in a much faster, much more efficient way. And then leading to what would be the analysis on a much quicker span. So we see here we've we have those guiding layers and you can then after that either copy some sections or just regenerate, move these these uh, floor plans, design plans that have initially helped you generate the story. So this is the one demo for one kind of structure. I will now go to a different kind of structure for the other part of the demo. For the second part of the demonstration, I'd like to work on a project without using the importation of the tracing files from Maida's drawing. What I'd like to show is how Engine itself has its own grid system that can be easily used to make a pro uh, problem from scratch. So for instance here, I can actually vary the distance between the each of the guiding lines that I'll be using to trace geometries. And so I can even vary the distance between on the same direction. For instance, here I'm in the X direction and I'm telling them to place a bigger spacing in the middle. Then I can also do diff, uh, just specify for the other dimensions itself, for the Y and in the Z direction. And then just select, even by plane, to start using these uh, grids as guidings for my drawings. So assuming that I've already defined specific sections or in, in materials, the program actually allows you to draw your own sections. Uh, we had seen the database. So depending on whether you're using a steel section, you can actually select all these different international codes and select from a long list of sections that you can actually use as a template and then modify yourself. And so let's just for columns, let's just make a column. This would be an RC, reinforced concrete. So I can tell the dimensions and I can actually even edit it as it is here. But then I can just add the section to my database of sections. So um, moving on, assuming I've already have a few sections defined, I can actually select, here's the one we recently created, I can actually just select from the list and start drawing by just tracing over this grid. So here I've created two connecting beams in an L shape and I can either keep drawing or I can actually just copy, use some of these commands that allow me to copy a created section along the grid itself. And so it's relatively easy to start making some of these structures, either steel plants or even combined sec uh, story or buildings that have combined kinds of sections.
And so here I want to copy this other section in the opposite direction. trying to copy. And once I've copied a grid on one plane, I can actually use the similar command to copy this plane onto the rest of the building. So I can just select my plane and select a direction. In this case it would be in the vertical direction. And I can just tell it how many times I wanted to recreate this and at what height. And then from then, I can also go back to my plane selection method, and I can do columns as well. So similar to what we just did, we can just actually select the new section we had created for the column, draw a column, and then copy it. Again, using the grid lines. And then lastly, just copy this row of columns all across to the left direction. So for that, I can actually make it a little easier by just hiding from view the beams, and then using the command again for copy, and again just making sure that I am hitting the grid line points. Actually, those last ones were a mistake, but I can actually just get rid of those, get rid of those as well. So now that I've had the columns and the beams in place, actually, that last column I didn't like. I'm gonna. redo these one more time. So now that I have my columns and beams in place, I can actually tell the program that I want to make sure they're all connected. So I can use this very simple intersect command. And from here, I can easily tell the program to do other things like add slabs. The program will automatically find the sets or interconnections that have been created by the beams and the columns and apply individual slabs in the sections. And so from here, I can just decide the thickness and simply tell the program to go ahead and apply these. So we see now that these sections have been created all around the section. And if I wanted to, I could actually even change. Um, we have different types of slabs that can be used. So for instance, um, 
other type of elements. In this case, they're all kind of members. We see here that when I select some sections, I can see the material that's been assigned to it, the thickness. I can change that. Um, and let's just, for instance, these can be plate elements instead of just membrane elements that can actually reflect the the vertical, the loads in the perpendicular direction, not just the horizontal or parallel. So from here, I can then move on and start applying loads. So, you know, a common load would be something like self-weight, gravity. I can easily also just uh, create my sets of loads. So the dead and let's just say live load for this simple analysis. So the gravity would be part of the dead load. And then I can also just apply what would be the slab loads. So specify, uh, let me change my units to kilonewtons. So my dead load can be, for instance, uh, a negative one. My live load can be a negative four kilonewton per meter square. And then I can just easily assign these to either some or in this case all my loads if I wanted to make it by you know different sets I could also do that but it's relatively easy so now we can also go ahead and apply the wind loads but for that I first want to generate a uh, hype data story data as the program calls it and I can actually be auto generated the program you know once this structure is in place will automatically find the height of each layer and the level And that's important when it comes to other static loads, like we will see for what would be the wind and seismic. So for applying wind load, there's actually different methods uh, depending on the type of structure that you have, as we saw in the presentation earlier. In this case, we'll just do it by story. And all you have to do is create the design wind load. You can select the design code. The program has, because you've defi defined the story data, already identified the height of the structure. And it will apply these automatically based on the code you decide you chose. And it would be the same for static load, for the seismic static load. There's different methods of applying it. In this case, we're also doing a building structure. And so you select the code and you have other specifications like the ground type, stuff like that. And the program, again, based on the data that it has already about the height of the building, can calculate the period of the structure based on some of these uh, you know, specifications that you give it. And then automatically apply what would be the seismic loads. So from here we would just have to continue on and create what would be other things like the load to mass specification. So we can tell the program, for instance, the dead load S1, and let's say the scale for the live load to be 1.3, other things I consider self-weight. And then lastly, we can just uh, specify what would be the boundary condition. In this case, we can just fix fix the, the boundary condition. and apply it to what would be the bottom of the columns. So I can just select all the bottom of my columns. And once this is done, then it's from here, uh, we just have to create what would be the analysis case. Up to this point, we've been doing everything in geometry. What the program will do now then is mesh this this geometry and we can actually specify that the size of the mesh, in this case it's going to be elements of one meter, but we can make it even smaller if we wanted to. And we can also then just create the analysis case, what loads or conditions we want to consider. 
and then run it. Uh, we can also actually specify what would be uh, the sign, but first let's go ahead and just run it. I'm going to hide the just from the view. And then solve this project. So in this case, the analysis being finished, we can look at the post processor and the results have been organized by types of loads. So for instance, we can look at the deformations strictly for the static load and look at results like what would be like the axial forces on the beams or the moments. But we can also look at the same for what would be the different cases, like the wind loads, which of course are going to look very different than just your average static load. And same for what would be like the, the seismic. So the program has very easy to modify visual results. So we can specify, change units, and you know, the formation is part of it. You can also ask for max values or tag individual values, create on-curve diagrams itself. And from here, what you can actually also do is what would be create like load combinations. Once you wanted to get into what would be the, the design aspect of the program. So let's say you're done with the analysis. and now you want to design. So a few things you would have to first do is create what would be your load combinations. In the design settings actually first you can select the code that you want for the design and some data about what would be also the material standards for let's say the rebar. You could then create your load combinations for steel and for RC and you can actually automatically create these. So you need this for based on the design code that we're using. You would also have to uh, assign what would be design groups. And the program can actually auto-generate these based on the type of section that you have. And lastly, you can specify data about what would be the rebar. So if, for instance, you can tell it for the columns you want all the columns to have certain specifications of what can be considered optimal. Same for the other RC things like the slabs, you can specify. And then lastly, you can just create your design case. And so based on these loads and the data that you've created, you could then, after running the analysis, the program will use all this and you just go ahead and run the design. For which uh, the results would look as follows. Uh, once you have the designs in place, your design results are different than your analysis results. You can get information like the status of sections. So here it's actually pretty color coded what sections are okay, which ones are critical, which ones are failing. You can get specific results also for your different types. In this case, we have the combination of steel and RC members. And so you can take a closer look at other things like service serviceability, not just strength checks, uh, crack ratios, uh, you know, or for the steel sections, you know, what would be some of these different ratios. Uh, you can all see these kind of results here. The program also allows you to get specific data of what would be, you know, your PM curve for a specific section or object. For instance, this column, or you can even get like a specified design report 
for instance, for one of these steel beam members, as we had seen previously, it can be specific or it can be specific to a section. I mean, general or specific to a section. And of course, there would be the full report that can be generated automatically. We've already seen uh, the capabilities of that in the presentation. But this is a you know a very simplified project. That's, you know, it's just kind of demonstrating how to go from start to finish. But we saw also, in combination with what was the Midas drawing, that it can actually lead to some pretty complex structures. That we'll take a look at some examples now. Back in the presentation. So we've seen the use of the program itself and, and some different kinds of examples. But from here, I'd like to just conclude the, the presentation with some project applications of the program itself and how using both methods of the internal CAD capabilities and the importing of from Midas Drawing, how you can really start to get into these really advanced structures. Uh, architects can really get involved in what is even part of the process more with the structural engineers because there, there can be a back and forth flow between the, the communication of the structural and the drawing software that allows you to get these kind of what would be for instance twisted towers or this curved surfaces that you can get for these kind of like very futuristic looking pavilions curved surfaces, as well as uh, more complex structures that are, for instance, multi-towers that in other programs it's very difficult to model in a single, in the same, basically run, in the same model. You would have to have, in some cases, separate. Or complex facilities that have uneven slab floors, uneven connections. And, you know, as we saw too, for steel structures itself, it's very, very easy to draw, very easy to connect, very easy to analyze and get a specific optimal design and this really gets creative once you start combining these two types of structures when you can have something like a you know steel based refinery but you can also include what would be the irregular sections like the you know refinery silo or tanks itself and so this program has a lot of capabilities to really get into these kind of like very advanced, very complex structures that would be very difficult to model or a lot of simplifications would have to be taken even for these kind of like advanced looking stadiums or but something even as simple as what would be a steel tower. So we can see here the drawings that are generated after the final analysis so the program can actually go back to generate its own drawings after finishing and even some simpler structures that are not necessarily based on buildings like bridges or some underground uh, simple tunnels can also be directly modeled in Midas and Gen. So if you have any questions, you can either visit our website or directly email us at the, at the email you're looking at. This would be the conclusion of the presentation. Thank you for your time.